Every single day, millions of Kenyans across the country use charcoal, wood, and kerosene fuels to make their breakfast, lunch, or dinner. While these types of fuels are cheap and readily available, they are slowly but surely contributing to the giant in the room, climate change. On today's episode of Climate Smart Agriculture, we explore alternatives to these commonly used energy sources. One such alternative is solar energy, which farmers in Kirinyaga County are embracing. Let us meet our eco-warriors of the day. Meet Samuel Mwangi. Samuel is a dairy farmer based in Kirinyaga County. In this farm, he has over 50 cows with almost 90% of them being host and frisian due to the high productivity of the cows. Starting the dairy business was not an easy task. The investment in the cows was high, and the elements he required too, such as conventional electricity, was high. To reduce his costs, Samuel opted to install a generator to enable him and his farmhands to prepare milking the cows as from 4 a.m. But this proved difficult. Compared to using the generator, Samuel has seen tremendous benefits, one of which is being able to deliver his milk to his customers at the right time, beating his competitors. Kuna kerere ya generator, 
lakini wakati ile jana nalia nasikia hapa kila mkiongea ni mpaka ongea sauti kubwa eh lakini sasa unaenda kasi mzuri Less than 10 kilometers from Samuel Mwangi is Elizabeth Wangeshi, popularly known as Mama Shem. Elizabeth is a small-scale poultry farmer who uses solar energy in her small farm and for her household needs. In fact, one of the things she particularly likes doing is watching TV with solar energy and checking on her chicken. <laughs> interest makaramashio dogi dogi so akugura nigyo na maguta matawari ndogo so akugura kogwa kona riu kona hadhara ni ranyi hanyiha when elizabeth reflects on the past there are numerous benefits she has seen one such benefit is letting her grandchildren roam in the house without fear or worry they may stumble into the fire and get burnt ona hedio ni rahuda to sora to nini we ni watu na gatu adigagira no wakati na tututi na tututi na maisha mara hivi ndio na kidogo ya kila kigeneti muno ni horo wa kuchajithi ndio kidogo kidogo kuroro kisaji kana ukora wira kati no ile kutakiririwa before the solar energy, Elizabeth was used to a lot of smoke as she used the conventional methods of kerosene, firewood, among others. These methods resulted in problems with the respiratory tract when it came to breathing in for both adults and children. <laughs> Another advocate for solar energy is Patrick Mushiri. During the day, Patrick works for Green Lights Limited as the business development manager. But all through, Patrick is one of the strongest advocates for solar energy. Renewable energy is basically gaining prominence across the globe because of climate change, uh, and rightly so, because it, it is available in abundance, especially when it comes to solar, and in specific on the continent that we live in, in Africa, where we have very many hours of sunlight. It, um, it makes sense that we should be able to tap into that energy to be able to power most of the things that we use at home, especially the basic needs that we have. Uh, but uh, solar energy in specific is actually expanding into powering a lot more than just uh, households and it's evolving into what we now call productive use. Right, it's being used in agriculture, it's being used in powering up uh, uh, large equipment like refrigerators that can be used in hospitals. So, um, in my opinion, I think uh, renewable energy is the way to go for the world. 
uh, especially if we want to, um, to save the climate and live a better world for the generations that will come after us. The spread of solar and other modern energy technologies in African countries is considerably low. Despite the global viability and growth in the solar energy market, African countries continue to lag behind. However, here in Kenya, things are quite different. According to insights provided by Rodel and Partner, Kenya is steadily becoming a world leader in the number of solar power systems in salt per capita as more residents tend to solar rather than make connections to the country's electric grid. I think this is because a lot of what needs to be done is to move people from what, what has been culturally used before. And so it's a lot of education that is required. Interestingly, Kenya's uptake on solar is actually amongst the highest globally. Uh, um, and I think what needs to happen more and more is education for people to understand uh, how solar works, how cost effective it is, how beneficial it is, because it has benefits all the way from cost to health. Um, and because of that, I think um, uh, people are starting to realize the benefits that come with, with uh, using solar products, uh, especially in households in Kenya, where the growth has been really quick. Um, but there's still things that need to be done. There's a lot of enablement that needs to come from government and policies uh, that government put in place in regards to energy to help uh, accelerate or scale the growth of renewable energy. One of the most common perceptions about solar energy use is that it does not work in cold regions with little or no sunshine. Patrick attributes this perception to lack of consumer awareness and outdated solar technologies. 